I am recording and ready when you are. Uh, you're joking, right? Yeah, it should be fine. You're listening to the final episode of the Dune Steve Audio Fiction Magazine. And may I add, it's about bloody time. Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Big Anklevich. Welcome to another episode of the Dune Steve Audio Fiction Magazine. Here with me is Rish Outfield. Say hello to the folks at home, sir. Hey guys, how have you been? <laughs> Long time no see, huh? Yeah, it, it it has to have been. What did we do? A Christmas show last year? Yeah, a sort of Christmas show. We did. We didn't have a story. We just like we felt bad for not having a Christmas show, and so we talked about Christmas songs. Didn't we talk about that? Uh, I feel sorry for that laddie because he hasn't got a daddy song. Oh, right, right. <laughs> That's right. And there were all sorts of additional verses. <laughs> right. So it's definitely been a while. But yeah, we're back to uh, to present to you another story. Maybe a final story is what it is. We got a story today by a man named Rish Outfield. On three, everybody pointed Rish and laugh. Ever heard of him? Vaguely. I, if you give me a minute, I'll, I'll come up with where I know that from. Yeah, I think we may have done a story of his before. I think that might be what it is. But yeah, the story is called Know When to Walk Away, Know When to Run. Awful. It's, a, it's an interesting little story, and, and I had a lot of fun putting it together, to tell you the truth. So I hope you guys enjoy it. What can we tell them about Rish Outfield that they need to know before the story starts? Does he have something available on Amazon that they can purchase or something like that? Uh, yeah, there's a... Maybe Audible? Audio collection called uh, Who Can It Be Now and Other Stories. That's 2022. Just a collection of me re reading some of my stories. They can check that out if they want to. I'm trying to put it more out, but uh, you know how it is. It's, it's, <laughs> it's easy to say that I want to do it. It's hard to do it. Yeah, but, you know, you've got a lot of stuff out there. If people just search your name on Amazon, I think they could probably find something that they, uh, they haven't seen before, and they could uh, check it out and enjoy it. So, yeah, this, this can be a primer for you, what you can possibly expect. If you get Who Can It Be Now? Stories by Rish Outfield. So let's go ahead and we'll head into the story and uh, we'll see you guys on the other side. How's that sound? Know when to walk away. Know when to run. Check or raise, sir. I heard the dealer ask. He was standing right in front of me, but he sounded far away. Huh? I said, coming back to attention. The casino had been brightly lit before, but now it looked dark. Too dark, like half the bulbs had burned out. The unsubtle dark that let people know a business was about to close. When had that happened? You may check, raise, or fold, the dealer said something near to irritation oozing from his voice. I blinked and turned back to the table. Tracy the waitress was long gone, but I had been staring where she'd last been standing for a while. Too long. Sorry, I said to those around me. I glanced down at my cards, which I didn't remember seeing before. A nine and a jack. Not a fold, I said. No, check. The dealer, a portly, genial guy named Manolo, when Nathan and I first joined the table, but now a sour-faced fat man named Manolo, grumbled something under his breath, and my best friend leaned in and whispered, Go easy on the alcohol, dude. It's only midnight. Nathan was right. I was good and drunk. Part of it was my usual inability to hold my liquor. The other part was that beautiful, 
tired looking waitress with Tracy on her name tag. She had been so friendly, so eager to laugh at my clever-ish banter, and oh, so attractive. And I'd ordered twice the drinks I normally would have just to keep her coming around. Pathetic, maybe. But not as pathetic as my Texas Hold'em prowess, a game my buddy Nathan had taught me in high school, but I seemed to have forgotten the rules of. This would have been my one-year anniversary today, if the wedding had happened, that was. This trip had been Nathan's idea, and though I appreciated it, I really did. I knew I wasn't being much fun tonight. I was just too aware that I was alone in the world and that I was no better off a year later than I had been that miserable almost wedding day a year ago. One of the other players, a black guy way too old to be wearing a high school letter jacket, said, You're up, kid. He was talking to me, even though we were around the same age. It was my turn again, to throw in five dollars or bow out. I folded. Then the dealer flipped the last card, which turned out to be a ten. That would have given me a straight. Maybe I'd have won if I had stayed in, but it didn't matter now. Immediately, I looked for Tracy, the waitress, again. Was there a name for that thing she did with her hair? Where was she from? What did she smell like? How old was she? So pretty. I refocused on the game. There were three other people at the table, including the dealer. Before, there had been five, but some had left at some point, and I hadn't even noticed. Tracy, though, I had noticed, and she had been gone long enough my glass was empty and the ice was starting to melt. I was the big blind next, and couldn't remember how much that was. Nathan leaned over. They do serve Coke, you know. What? I'm just saying, she'd come over for a Sprite or a water, too. And he gave me a reassuring smile. Oh, oh yeah, I said. And the dealer cleared his throat. <clears throat> I put in a couple chips and got my cards. A three and an eight. Great. Around me, the room was gently rocking. But nobody mentioned an earthquake, so I didn't either. I folded on my turn, even though no one had raised. I wasn't feeling so hot. I needed Tracy to come back, then maybe I'd feel better. I know it made no sense, but that's what my hindbrain was telling me. When I looked back at the game, I saw the dealer reveal an eight, a ten, a king, and two threes. I shouldn't have folded. The winner of all those chips only had a pair of kings. He tipped the dealer, looked at me unsympathetically for some reason, then headed for the hills. The stool I was sitting on was wobbly. Or I was, I couldn't tell which. The old man in the seat next to me took a swig of his drink and began crunching the ice. It sounded thunderous in my ears. A waitress was approaching our table. She was tall and blonde and had large, overflowing breast implants. She wasn't Tracy. The black guy playing with us ordered a Long Island. She looked at me and Nathan. Where's Tracy? I asked. In my ears, it sounded like someone else asking. A child or a preteen girl. Tracy's shift ended at 12.30, sweetie. She said. She wasn't much older than me and Nate, I noticed, and her calling me sweetie reminded me of Flo on that Mel's Diner sitcom. I hated that show. Nathan said, We're fine, thanks. And the waitress went off to get the black guy's drink. I could have cried. I think your friend needs to pace himself. An accented voice said from the table. I turned and saw that we had been joined by an older woman in a gray dress with some kind of headscarf and a string of pearls around her neck. She was plump and tall and looked Spanish or Italian, European at least. I wasn't exactly feeling observant at the moment. He's cool, Nathan said. Right, Jay? I didn't know if I was cool or not. I wanted Tracy, even if it was just to thank her for the drinks. It bothered me that she hadn't even told me goodbye. I'd wanted to marry her, after all. 
dealing, the dealer said. And though I looked in front of me and my friend, I couldn't remember what I was supposed to do. I thought I might need to lay down somewhere. He's in, Nathan said and smacked me on the back as if to wake me up. We were all dealt hands and I looked at my two cards, a nine and a queen. All of a sudden, I didn't know how to play anymore. They were both clubs. Was that a good hand? Were the blue chips worth 10 or 20? I closed my eyes. I raise. I heard the accented woman say. I opened my eyes, deciding to call, and froze. The woman had no face. In place of her earlier round, pleasant expression was a gigantic mouth with a circle of pointy teeth the size of a grapefruit. I'd seen some sea creature in a book with a head like that, but I didn't remember its name. Her head was bald, and her skin was the unhealthy white of uncooked chicken. Her eyes, on the sides of her head instead of in front, were black, shiny pools of oil. My blood froze in my veins. I needed to go to the bathroom. Come on, man, the black guy said. He looked ready to go to another table. Either that, or take a swing at me. I'm sorry, I said in a small voice. The creature in the gray dress and pearls said, Maybe Jay ought to sit this round out. Her hands that held the cards were only nubs, with long painted fingernails at the end clutching the cards. Fingernails, but no fingers. I shook my head. It took more effort than it normally did. Nathan, talk to him. She, it, said. Nobody gave her a second glance. To them, she had not changed from the lady who'd joined us a minute ago. You all right, buddy? Nathan asked softly. He didn't sound frustrated at all, just concerned, and I loved him for it. I don't. The dealer cleared his throat. He had been doing that a lot tonight, but I'd chalked it up to a cold. Cold, I said at last, putting down my cards. All right, the black guy said, sighing in relief. Since he didn't know my hand, why was he so happy about it? Somebody laughed over at the craps table. I glanced in that direction to see if they were laughing at me. You want a water or something? Nathan asked me and checked. No, I needed to get out of here. Can we go? I asked, trying to remain calm, but not quite managing. I glanced at the woman again, but she was still some kind of monster. What? Uh, No, uh, I've got a great hand, Nathan said, and the black guy folded. He huffed and left the table. I I, I don't... I began. Just take a little break, buddy, Nathan told me. You'll be okay. The woman thing took the black guy's spot, right next to my friend. I could hear something wet when she moved, like slugs mating. Or get some fresh air, he suggested. I shook my head. That made me feel even worse. The room was now rocking like we were on a boat. A small, leaky boat in an unseasonal windstorm. Oh, too much to drink? Asked the woman in pearls, semi-concerned. Now she looked like a pudgy, middle-aged Italian again. You seeing things, Ragazzo? I had been. I... I... Uh, we all been there. The old man at the end of the table said. It was the first I'd heard him speak besides raise and fold. I I think I'm going to go back to the room. I managed, though every word was an ordeal. That's a good idea, the woman thing said, grinning. Her teeth were white and not at all sharp, but they still seemed predatory as she looked from me to Nathan and back. You don't want to play with an unclear head. 
You could lose your soul in a game like this. I looked at Nathan, who smiled at her comment, not picking up on anything alien or threatening there. Sorry to say it, but she's right. I stood up. Come with me, I said to him, emphasizing how serious I was, even though my balance seemed to shift where I stood. (laughs) No can do, buddy, he said, smiling reassuringly, glancing at his chips. Gotta make this stack grow a little. Feeling lucky, are you, Prestante? The woman asked him. But there was a threat in there somewhere, too. As a matter of fact, I am, he boasted. Then he leaned in toward me. But if you've got to sleep it off, I totally understand. Please, Nate, I begged. I knew I was whining, but I couldn't help myself. It'll be all right. The woman cooed. Not an unpleasant face, except for the eyes. They seemed to retain some of that alien blackness, windows into a damned soul. I'll take good care of your friend. And she put a hand on Nathan's arm. It made a wet slapping sound, even though it looked human enough. Nathan seemed a little taken aback by her forwardness, but was still flattered. See? He chuckled. I'm taken care of. Nate, listen to me. I... The old man clapped his hands together. It sounded like a shotgun blast. I looked over. Let's play some cards. He said, definitely not looking at me. Yes, good idea. The woman said. I looked toward her, and she was staring right at me her mouth open a little too wide, a little too round. I've got a feeling about this next hand. I actually took a step away from her, like she'd just brought out a gun. You'll make it back okay? My friend asked. He was concerned, but distracted. He had a lot of chips in front of him, and a woman next to him that... Well, I didn't know what he was seeing there. No, I said. It was a year from the worst day of my life. I was dizzy and drunk, somehow out of chips, and was having terrifying hallucinations. I don't know where our room is, I added desperately. Room 212, he reminded me. Easy to remember. The busty waitress arrived with the Long Island iced tea for the guy who'd left. Looking around for him, the dealer tossed me a look as though her loss of a tip were all my fault. Maybe it was. Nate, come with me, I said again. I was going to be sick, I now knew. Might take a while, might take three seconds. Nathan glanced back. The dealer was holding the game for him. For me. Look, Nathan said. I'll I'll play for a couple more hands, an hour at most, then I'll come and check on you. I'll buy you breakfast. Another table? I suggested, but it came out muddled. Sure thing, Jay. In a minute. Be careful, I said, signaling with my eyes to the not woman. Oh, I will, he said. And hey, if Tracy comes back, I'll tell her you're in 212. Tracy? Who was Tracy? Oh, oh yes, the waitress from about nine hours before. He will? His expression was condescending, but in an affectionate way. Sure. I'll quote that Rod Stewart song to her. Never fails. All your dreams will come true. You don't really think that she was into me? Just put a sock or something on the doorknob as a warning. You promise? Yeah. Promise, I said, my drunken mind forgetting for a moment I'd just seen a shape-shifting monster in a black dress. Nice. Get some rest, buddy. Sleep tight. The woman sang. It held so much menace, I didn't see how no one noticed it. Nathan? I began, and the woman thing licked her lips. Her tongue had suckers on it, like the legs of an octopus. I got the hell out of there. It was hard to walk in a straight line, 
and I actually bumped into a trash can, accidentally putting my hands in the overfull ashtray at the top. I slowly turned around and looked back at the poker table. The monster woman had scooted her stool right next to Nathan now, and she had changed again into that toothy, horrible thing. The pearls were half embedded in its doughy, pale flesh. Its mouth was a gaping circle, but it still appeared to be smiling. Nathan, evidently, didn't notice. I kept moving, taking slow, deliberate steps. Someone at a slot machine whooped, and I nearly broke into a run. I looked around for Tracy, hoping she had forgotten something and had come back, just needing somebody to make me feel good again, needing to see beauty after something that ugly. But she was long gone. Then I had an awful thought. What if I saw her, and she too had no face? What if I looked around and everyone in the casino was one of those creatures? I watched the floor as I walked, forcing myself to go a little faster, even though the entire building seemed to be rotating beneath my feet. As soon as I was out of the casino and into the lobby, I felt a little better. The air quality seemed to change, as though they'd been pumping something through the vents in there. I tried to walk casually and naturally, but it was difficult. I kept wanting to glance behind me to see if I was being followed. Where there was one boogeyman, there could be others. I pressed the up button at the elevator and waited for it to descend. I was tempted to lay down on the carpet for just a minute, but I didn't do it. The elevator came for me, mercifully empty. Two minutes later, I was back in our room. The air conditioner was blasting, and it was refreshing and clean-smelling in there. I peed, not aiming perfectly, but adequately. I was afraid to look in the mirror, afraid of what I'd see staring back at me. But when I did, it was just me, big-eyed and pallid, a guy who should have been married a year ago, but now drunk, scared, and without his best friend. I slipped off one shoe, but didn't manage the second one before I collapsed onto the bed. This was Nathan's bed, not mine. But I didn't care. The room spun up and down, back and forth around me. I hadn't vomited yet. Maybe I wouldn't have to. Or if I was really responsible, I'd get up, go to the toilet, and force myself to feel instantly better. But I didn't want to. I just wanted to sleep. As I allowed myself to drift away, I thought of the monster at our Texas Hold'em table, telling me I'd had too much to drink. If I was having some sort of hallucination, how did she know I was seeing things? Somehow, she knew I was seeing her as she truly was. And then she said she'd take good care of Nathan. How did she know my friend's name? What did she mean by take good care? You could lose your soul in a game like this. What I needed to do was get up, call his cell, and insist he come back here right now. I could make up a story, or just break down crying, which would be so easy tonight. And he would come. He had always come to my rescue over the years, ever since Wade Patterson beat me up in seventh grade. Nathan was my friend. In the meantime, I hoped Nathan was all right. I hoped that I drank too much, too fast, and lost my mind for a few minutes, had some kind of mental breakdown brought about by depression, mixing different kinds of drinks, and the attention of a pretty girl. I hoped he'd come back soon, that he'd make fun of my drunkenness and instant love for some cocktail waitress in a Vegas casino. He'd wake me up in an annoying, hangover antagonizing way, and I'd be furious at him. When the anger wore off, we'd laugh about my little freak out. All my worries and paranoia would fade away as soon as he came walking through that door. It was time to call him. And if he didn't answer, then I'd go down there and get him myself. Tell him I couldn't get the key to work, that someone was trying to rob our room. Just get him out of there and away from her, from that putrid water demon in an evening gown. 
all I had to do was rise from this bed, splash some cold water on my face, cowboy up, and go after him. I'd look out for him for once, instead of the other way around. And I'd do just that. In a minute. As soon as the room stopped acting like a broken carnival ride. Just one minute, I told myself as I passed out completely. Maybe two. everybody welcome back i hope you enjoyed the story one last time i know i did (laughs) i know i did so uh big anklevich produced this story and uh i know that he reached out to get some uh voices for it do you want to uh, go down the list on that yeah so uh i really wanted to make this as much like uh, you know, an old school style Dune Steef episode as possible. Since we're putting it to uh, rest, I guess, today. We're giving it one one final go. And so I... Uh, that brings us to the end of the show. I sent out some emails and I got some folks to, to volunteer to do some of the lines for us. So we had uh, Brian Lincoln, longtime uh, contributor to the show, do the voice of Manolo, the... <laughs> How dare you cantankerous dealer and uh we had tina kolakowski do the lines of or the line i think is all it was of the uh waitress that wasn't tracy (laughs) and i think the major role in the show was julie hoverson who did the role of the creepy italian monster woman with eyes on the side of its head and a face full of teeth. And then I did also have a, a friend of mine from work, Murray, play the role of the black guy in the letterman jacket that was far too old to be still wearing his letterman jacket. And then, of course, Rish and I did some voices uh, as well. Uh, hopefully by now you recognize those, <laughs> since this is the... Final time we're going to bring something like this to you. Uh, hopefully you can you can pick out our voices and tell who's who. Goodbye, boys. Have fun storming the castle. Uh, although I've, I, I know a lot of people who thought that you did the voice of announcer man for, for years and years. So And now it's time for a special uh, new segment of our show. It's called Go B*** Yourself. Not necessarily. I guess we can, uh, we can fool people. Or let me take that back. You can fool people. <laughs> I have tried to imitate Announcer Man in the past, and yeah, it's, his voice was uh, one of a kind. How's that? I love that Josh Groban person. <laughs> there you go. I prefer that Josh Gorbin myself. Oh, that's right. So frustrating. I, we had him record that Josh Groban thing for an, a story of mine that we never ran. So oh really? We were gonna do it as a an audio drama kind of thing, and I can't remember why we didn't do it. It it, uh, it was a sketch that I wrote years ago. I wrote it for us, I think, in college, because there were girls that loved Enya, and I'd hear Enya <laughs> and just instantly want to go to sleep. I oh, it's just awful. And so I wrote a sketch <laughs> making fun of people listening to Enya, and then I said, "Well, we'll do this on the Doonstief." And so many years had passed that Enya was no longer a going concern. Mm-hmm. And so I think we talked about it. And it's like, what is the equivalent of Enya in 2010 <laughs> or whatever it was? <laughs> However long ago it was. I was like, yeah, I think Josh Groban. <laughs> and so I updated it to Josh Groban and uh, put some reference to CDs being antiquated technology or something like that in the script, whereas just, you know, CDs were the thing when I wrote the script. Right. Uh, and then we never ran it, and I, I, I can't remember now why. I just hmm. I, Maybe it was one of those where I thought, okay, next time we get together with Renee and Marshall and Abby and Brian, 
and Lauren or something will will do this and and we we never got together with them again. Yeah, I don't know. That's interesting. Maybe we can do that as a Rish Outcast sometime or something like that. You could have announcer man make a guest appearance on the Rish Outcast. <laughs> he could stop by to say hi. But yeah, I don't know. It's uh I had a lot of fun putting this story together. It's weird because we've been so infrequent slow to make stuff so i'm not sure what the right word is for it but you know we haven't we haven't been putting out stuff very much in the last i don't know five years six seven years something like that it's been a long time since we've had any real speed going and even longer really since i did a lot of the uh editing for the show because at a certain point you know I I was already burning myself out and I branched out to as many people as I could and and you know got people to work with us as producers of our shows and that helped to you know lower my workload and make it something that I could keep up with and um, it was weird editing this story as I worked on it Editing audio itself, just the reading down, doesn't feel so unusual to me. But then when I started putting in sound effects, just the very first thing, I took a casino background track and I dropped that on there. And immediately it started to feel super fun. (laughs) Just listening to it with that going on in the background was fun. And then I started adding in other stuff when things were needed and then when I got to the point where we had, like, you know, the, the alien that made the, the slurping noises when she would move, and I started to <laughs> add in, I, I, I downloaded a track of somebody's stirring macaroni. It was an ASMR video <laughs> of somebody stirring a bowl of macaroni. And, you know, once I started doing that stuff, oh, it was a joy. It was so fun. <laughs> it was like... You had a jacket or, you know, some clothes that you was your favorite clothes from years ago, but then you got too fat to fit them or something like that. And then you went on a diet and all of a sudden you can fit it again. And it was like putting those clothes on again for the first time and looking at yourself in the mirror or something, just being like, oh, yeah, I remember that. Oh, I love this outfit. So great. That's what it felt like working on it. It was so weird. I really enjoyed it to the point where I almost thought, shoot, we were planning on making this our last episode, but I almost feel like I want to not do that now. I want to I want to save it and and keep it around. But um I don't think that that's actually the way to go, unfortunately. But there is a way to go. We'll talk about that uh, a little later on. But yeah, it was just, it was a lot of fun to work on the show and to do all that kind of stuff, to put all the sound effects and things like that in it. Um, I had a good time. And uh, I don't know, did you did you enjoy listening to it as much as you might have an old <laughs> episode that... Uh, we did. Yes and no. I, this story I'm super familiar with because I recorded it years ago. And then during the pandemic, I was writing every single day. And one day I opened this file, I think by accident. And uh, yeah, let, let, let me go back very briefly. Uh, so I, I, I went to a casino with my brother and my brother-in-law and they were doing a poker tournament. And we all entered, and I, I, I remember it being fairly reasonable to enter, like $20 or $25. But I was eliminated in the very first round. <laughs> and my brother and my brother-in-law were not. But they wouldn't let you go hang out with other players. You know what I mean? They're still playing, and you're not allowed to approach other people. And so I was just bored, wandering around and... Uh, I remember I I came up with this idea while I was wandering around watching people play uh, roulette and and blackjack and such. And it, I thought it was such a great idea. Oh, I can't wait to put this on paper. 
but I was never able to translate what I had in my head to the story. And, and I, I don't remember when it was, whether it was 2008 or 2010 or somewhere around then when this happened. Oh, you know, it was the night that Whitney Houston died. So I could probably go find that out and know exactly what day it was that I came up with this story. And because I started to write in the hotel room and then I turned on the TV and that was on the TV. That was breaking news. And so I watched like tributes to her for a few minutes instead of writing. Hey, at least some things haven't changed. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, during the pandemic, I accidentally opened this story and it's like, oh, you know, that's, that's one of the ones that I was always disappointed in. Uh, maybe I could go through and like do a revision, do a rewrite, do what Dean Wesley Smith says you should never do. And uh, I think it's a little closer in this version to how it was in my head, but no, I was never able to, to quite pull it off. Uh, but I had talked to you about it and said, you know, it's sort of about a guy and his friend whose friend is looking out for him. It would be fun if you helped me record it and you could be the voice of the friend. And uh, I mentioned that to you and you're like, oh yeah, yeah, that sounds great. And then you said something about the title. <laughs> well, yeah, I just thought that the title would really make for the perfect last episode of the show. You know, this, I mean, obviously it's based on uh, the Kenny Rogers song, but know when to walk away and know when to run. That's one of those things that I, I, I just felt for a, the longest time now that we let the Dune Steef languish for way too long. You know, it's... I felt like it was something that had more value than we, we've we been uh, allowing it to have. Uh, you know, way back when we recorded our actual final episode. And we, shoot, when would you say it was that we actually recorded that? That was like 2010, maybe, or 11? So, <laughs> yeah, I, th I think it was. I think it was at least 10 years ago that we recorded our final episode. It was so long um, ago that Katy Perry was something that we talked about in the episode. That's right. This this new artist, Katy Perry. Yeah, she was still worth talking about at that time. But yeah, it was, you know, we, re we recorded that. And the reason we recorded that back in the day was because, you know, we you, I think, had heard about this phenomenon called pod fading which is the way most podcasts tend to die. Well, uh, we should change that. Most podcasts never make it past like the third episode. <laughs> like 99% of them only get like two or three episodes. And then people realize, wait, this is a hell of a lot more work than I thought it was. And so they give up and that's it. But, you know, podcasts have a tendency to do what's called pod fading, where, you know, they... The time between episodes gets longer and longer. And, you know, they'll go months without releasing something. And then, you know, the creators be like, oh, no, no, we're not dead. Look, we're we're still here. And they put something out. And then it goes months and months. And so we resolved to not have that happen to the Dune Steef. And so we made the uh, final episode. We recorded it and we did a whole... It was right around the time that we did, I think, the 100th episode or so. And we did, you know, a whole retrospective, <laughs> which is, of course, is super out of date now because uh, it's been so much time since then. But we talked about, you know, what it was like doing the show and how great it was and, and all that kind of stuff. And then we set that aside. And I, I don't know how long it took you before you got around to editing it, but then you edited it. And we just had it there in our pocket. And then we just kind of left it there and we started pod fading <laughs> and instead of using it for what it was there for, we uh, continued to, to do that where we would reappear and do a couple of things and then fade and then reappear and do a couple of things and fade. But I, I felt like we needed to give it, you know, we needed to give the old girl a proper burial. <laughs> 
instead of just let, you know, the corpse rot out there in the sun, forgotten. And it seemed to me like a story called No When to Walk Away was the perfect title to do that. Yeah, that was like April of 2021 that we had this conversation and you said, let's have that be the final episode. And over a year has passed without us doing it. <laughs> we finally got the story recorded. Do you, have, do you have any idea when that would have been? It was in April. Uh, near the end of April is when we recorded the story. Well, there you go. And then, yeah, it, it sat in, in my possession for several more months before I ever started editing it. It wasn't until July when I finally buckled down and finished it up and did what I was talking about before, you know, adding the sound effects and getting people to give us voices and and all of that stuff. Well, I, I definitely dragged my feet as well. I didn't want to, uh, to have this episode air. I, I didn't want to put things away. And when you called me and told me how much fun you were having editing, uh, I was reminded of how that was back when the Doon Steve was the thing, was the, our, our primary focus, and we would get together and work on it every week. Yeah. Whether we were recording a story or we were doing an episode or we're that getting my goat. Every week we would get together and work on it and there were good times. And then, yeah, we burned ourselves out, but uh, all it would take is, you know, reading a story or, uh, that we really liked or uh, somebody entered a contest that I was really excited about or, or whatever it was and, and we would become excited again. But it wasn't... I don't think we've felt it since the Christmas contest that we had. Right. Uh, where I believe we had like a whole year to work on that. And we still left everything to the last minute. And that's a perfect <laughs> way to burn yourself out. Yeah, it really is. And, and sadly, we burned out. I think uh, I burned out ahead of you. And I feel really bad about that because I know that you carried the load yourself for a, a long time with me doing, you know, the minimal amount of help to get things on the air every now and then you'd be like, we should do this for the show or we should do that for the show. And I'd be like, yeah, all right, we can do that. I guess it's just something that is going to happen. I think you finally burned out <laughs> as well to where you're just like, nah, I got, I got other things to do. And you decided to Stop being my beast of burden because your back was sore and your feet were hurting. <laughs> is, that, is that how the line goes? Something like that. Anyways, somebody's probably listening to this going, oh, jeez, man, you can't even get the lines right, you idiot. But yeah, I don't know. I, I, we're giving it a finale and, and finally putting it to rest. But there was a lot of good times and there was a lot of fun. And I want to say that there still can be. I mean, for one thing, obviously, all the episodes are still out there. I don't know what's going to happen when I stop paying the, the fee to keep the feed going. Libsyn charges me $15 a month, which is one of the reasons why... I thought, you know, we probably ought to just let this go because I keep paying $15 a month and we're not putting any episodes out. So why are we doing this? I don't know what will happen when I close that down, if the feed's just going to disappear and it'll go away or if it just stays there like archived forever. It's not really important because we have all of the stuff archived anyways. And uh, there is the Dune Steve YouTube channel which has all of the episodes of the Dune Steve, of That Gets My Goat, and of the Ankle Cast on there for people to uh, listen to if they would like to. And so you'll always be able to hear the stories and the episodes, even though the podcast itself isn't continuing. But beyond that, we're not dead. We're not... <laughs> 
uh, disappearing. We're not getting on a rocket ship and flying away to Mars. We're, we're still here and we're still doing stuff. And you've got the Rish Outcast, which has been going for a long time. You put out stories frequently, as well as some episodes where you just, you know, have something that you're really interested in that you want to talk about or whatever. That is available for anybody who wants to listen to it. It's got its, you know, its regular podcast feed. And you have a Patreon, right, that everybody can get onto if they want to support it? Yeah, I hope they do. Uh, if this is the first time you're hearing of it, it's www.patreon.com forward slash Rish Outfield. And it is uh, something that I work on all the time. I put out a, an address every month and episodes of my show every month, and uh, I've encouraged you to do the same. But Yeah, uh, and because of that encouragement, I've decided that I will, uh, especially since we're going ahead and giving the Dune Steve its finale right now. I'm going to open up a Patreon for the Ankle Cast, and I've already recorded an episode, a, a story for an episode of the Ankle Cast, uh, that I wrote uh, called Eye Opening. That'll be the uh, first episode that appears after the Dune Steef final episodes appear. I'll probably throw it onto this feed just so that people can hear it and see. But like I said, I don't know whether this feed's going to last. So, you know, you can search the Ankle Cast on yeah, Apple Podcasts and stuff like I don't know where I'll... That's one of those things that we've stopped worrying about so much is I don't even know what podcast uh, places we're still available on and which ones we need to like get back available on and stuff because you know I haven't paid attention to that because it hasn't been a pressing concern in so long. I don't know that podcast pickle is <laughs> such a big thing anymore. We used to make so much fun of podcast pickle. What do people listen to now? There's like Stitcher. I know that that was a thing that a lot of people listen to. And there's iTunes. We've always been on iTunes, but I think Google now does a podcast thing and Amazon does podcast thing. And I'm sure there's many others. I don't know what we're on and what we're not on. That's something I guess I'll have to look into with the ankle cast to make sure that it's available on all those things. But yeah, my plan is to try and do an, at least an episode per month. And every episode will have a story in it. And I also uh, asked Rish Outfield if he would guest host every episode with me. Or guest appear, I guess, is probably the better way to put it. I figure I'll, I'll try and at least be the host since it's called The Ankle Cast. And then I'll bring Rish on as a guest every time. And he can tell me how shite he thinks my story is this time. <laughs> Did you really say every episode you wanted me on? I... I don't remember that. I just thought... I did say that, and it's too late. You agreed. I thought you said that, you know, I'll have you on from time to time, and we can, you know, talk about stories. And, Next week and, on a very special episode of Blossom. Wow. Yeah, too late. You agreed. You're committed now. I'm going to have you on. It's going to be like the good old days when we used to get together every week, except for it'll only be every month. So it'll be much less uh, taxing. And... The real kicker is I'll edit the episode, so it'll be even better. You can just come on, talk for an hour, and then move on with your life like you never even did anything. You can pretend like it was just a bad dream, except for when all the things you said come back to haunt you. <laughs> but yeah, that's my plan with the ankle cast from here on out. So the, yes, the Dune Steef is going away. It's having its final episode, but it kind of isn't. Because there's still the Rish Outcast where you can get Rish's stories all the time. And there is still the Ankle Cast where you can get my stories. And you can hear the both of us talking, chatting, having a good time, speaking about this and that. I, I want to really use the Ankle Cast especially as a way to kind of force myself to keep writing. I made a new goal and we just finished the first month of that to get writing again uh, back in 2019 
and 2020, I wrote 300,000 words in a year. And then I stupidly stopped and didn't write again for almost two whole years. <laughs> yeah, I am fighting against that inertia and trying to get back at it and using the ankle cast as a way to, you know, keep myself going. I've got to write because I've got to have an episode every month with a story in it. So there's got to be something to put out. Uh, that is my plan. So yeah, we're both there and you can continue to hear our shows that have both of us on uh, on there and we'll even be both together plenty. So don't say goodbye. Say good journey. <laughs> <laughs> That's the greatest movie of all time you're quoting there, right? <laughs> That's right. Greatest movie ever. Getting cancer is much better than listening to you guys. So yeah, uh, I don't know. Is there is there other stuff that we uh, we should cover before we go? I'm trying to think of if I've said everything that I wanted to say before uh, moving on. Well, it, I haven't listened to the final episode in eight or nine years, so I, I can't remember everything that we cover there, but I would imagine that we talked about how nice it was to make friends through the podcast, to make connections with other people that liked what we were doing and wanted us to do voices or uh, guest bits or, you know, just participate with their podcasts. You know, it's a, a community that there are still people that we are in contact with all the time that we wouldn't have ever met if it weren't for the Dune Steve. And I, I think that that's a, a great legacy that having this podcast has uh, given us that even though, yeah, it pod faded just like we didn't want it to do, you know, <laughs> we still get Facebook messages or uh, on Twitter, people that know us from the Dune Steve. And uh, I still get invitations to do other people's podcasts. I, it, there's a the cats cast, which is just stories about cats, and they want me to narrate them. And yeah, there's yeah. How ironic is that, that? There is some definite irony there, because if they'd ever listened <laughs> to the Dune Steve, they would not have asked me to narrate a cats cast story. <laughs> yeah, that is one thing that's been absolutely wonderful about the show is just all the people that we were able to meet and to associate with because of it. I think it was probably one of the, I guess you could say it's a plus of me burning out <laughs> from doing all the editing that I did, having to look for help. And, you know, we had people that produced for us. We had people that were Oompa Loompas, we, we like to call them, that, you know, read our stories for us and, you know, helped us choose the stories that should air on the show. We had a huge group of people that provided vo voices for us for uh, the stories that we did. And it helped us in other ways, too, uh, beyond just that, helped with, you know, administration and stuff like that helped us get our YouTube channel going with all the episodes on there and so many things and so many good people that we we met and were able to work with just because, we, you know, we wanted to tell stories. <laughs> it was just a, a really wonderful thing. And that's, you know, one of the reasons why I kind of don't want it to totally end. Uh, I guess that's why I'm trying to get the ankle cast back in shape and, and save that and, and get it going. Cause I, you know, I still want to be able to interact with these people. And, you know, I still want to sometimes send out emails to these people and say, Hey, I'm doing a story. You guys want to give me a voice for this or that or this? I don't know how often I will do the full cast thing <laughs> on the ankle cast. Cause it is a lot of work. Maybe it'll only be for special occasions, or maybe uh, maybe I'll enjoy it enough that I'll try and do it all the time. Once a month is really not that bad. And I'd like to thank every one of those people. And I'm just going to say you know who you are. <laughs> because there's too many people to try and list them all. And I will certainly miss people by doing so. And so, yes, you know who you are that helped us. And... We're so grateful for all the help that we got and happy 
to have been able to, to meet you and to know you and to interact with you and to have fun with you and to win parsecs with you and all the good stuff that we did on this show. It was very much worth it. Uh, you could say it was a labor of love, but for some reason that phrase entails that it was unrewarding or too hard for what it was worth or something like that. Am I, am I being crazy with that? Or is that really what people mean when they say something was a labor of love? No, I, I, not sure. I, I think that people use that to mean anything. <laughs> okay. Well, then it was a labor of love. And you can take that as for whatever the heck it means. <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was difficult. And it, I guess we could say that it didn't, you know, bear any financial fruit. You know, it, it never became a job or anything like that. It was just for fun. Fun. Maybe that's what a labor of love means. I think that is. We didn't do it because... You know, we were expecting some kind of riches to come. We just did it because we loved it. And it made us happy. And you all who listened and helped made us happy. You know, it's really been a great ride. And I've enjoyed every minute of it, I have to say. Well, I want to thank those of you out there who have donated to the show. There were people who subscribed to give us donations even when there were like months in between episodes or longer <laughs> stretches right. that would go. Because those, those, those donations, they, they fed us when you and I lived nearby each other. Yeah. But then when we moved away, they just paid for the domain name. They paid for Libsyn. You know, they paid to keep that website going. That, that was great. That, especially the people that did that thing where you sign up for something and then you forget that you signed up for it. <laughs> and if they had been aware of it, they definitely would have canceled their subscription, but they forgot. Yeah. So I really want to thank those people. <laughs> I want to thank the people that would share episodes. You know, I haven't been on Twitter very long. It's probably been a year, right, since I got my own Twitter account. But every once in a while, somebody will say, oh, I was listening to an old Doonstief episode, and they'll post it, and it, it alerts me. And it makes me wonder, well, how many of these has been going on over the years that I, I was unaware of? And that sort of thing is, is really, really cool. We used to ask people if they would give us reviews out on uh, iTunes and those other places. And uh, I, I, right. I appreciate the people that would do that. I don't appreciate that one guy that complained that we did sound effects and that we did different voices uh, and he's like and sometimes they have kids doing kid voices f those guys uh, i don't thank him but i thank the other people yeah that that is definitely one of those things that i'd have to you know be appreciative of well i i mean at one point we did a donation drive i don't know if you remember this where we were asking people to help us raise some money so that I could get a new computer because my old computer had gotten so old that I couldn't edit the show on it anymore. It had become so slow that it was just unbelievably frustrating. And tons of people donated tons of money. It was crazy. We were just blown away by some of the donations that we got, floored by them. And um, it was, yeah, that would, you know, the generosity of of the people who did that was just amazing. Also, another thing that was super great was the people who would buy our merchandise and wear it around. I loved that. I don't know why, but uh, that was one of those things that I always wanted was people, if they got a shirt of ours or something, to take a picture of themselves wearing it and send it to me so that I could see that there were people out there actually wearing it. And I think one time, I want to say it was John Hyam who said this, but I could be wrong. <laughs> I know where you're going. But he said that he was on vacation in France and he was like at the Eiffel Tower or something like that, walking around, and he saw somebody wearing a Dune Steve shirt. You just made that story up. There ain't no girl like that. And they like looked at each other and said, yeah, Dune Steve, yeah, right on. And I think maybe he was wearing his too or some some crap like that. I don't know, but... <laughs> that's something that I have always wished would happen to me <laughs> because, you know, I used to always wear my Dune Steve shirt anytime I went to like a, a Comic-Con or something like that, hoping that somebody would be like, hey, nice shirt. I love the Dune Steve. 
<laughs> didn't happen. Although one time, what was it that I ordered? I ordered a Jonathan Colton shirt. It was a, a Welcome to Skull Crusher Mountain shirt. The one that has on the back it just says, what's with all the screaming? <laughs> and when when the package came, like I ordered it, I don't know exactly how that worked out, but for some reason, like it, one of those things like where it asked what your company name was or something. And so I wrote like Doonstief Audio Fiction Magazine on that line. And so it was on the invoice saying that it was Doonstief. And whoever it was that packed the box for me wrote, hey, we love the Doonstief. We listened to it in the warehouse. Dang, dude. That was really neat. I wish that there could have been more of it, but you know there's only so many unique listeners we've had over the years, but I would say probably less than 20,000 tops. You know, there's what, 8 billion people. So the chances that you run into one of them, pretty low. But um, yeah, it it definitely has been fun. Well, I uh, am on Facebook. I am on Twitter now. I'm on Patreon. I'm on Instagram. And you are in all of those places except Patreon, and you soon will be. That's right. If, if people want to get a hold of us, I still do narration for podcasts. I still do audiobook narration, although it's basically for one person now. <laughs> yeah, if you want to contact us, if you need us to help you with something, we are willing, and, uh, and we're still out there. And I guess this episode serves as telling people that we're not going away. That's right. That you can find us on our own shows. And then it sounds like I'm going to be joining you on your show, (laughs) which is just a terrible idea. Too late. You committed. And (laughs) so I also am not going to say goodbye, but I'm going to say good journey. And you're on journey into all the time. So saying good journey just makes sense. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, there you go. You can you can find us all there. Friend us on Facebook or Facebook. Follow us on Instagram or is it follow on Twitter as well? I don't know. I try to put stuff on those every day. And and also both of us have blogs that you can uh, follow as well. I try to post something there every day and make sure that it gets out to as many people as possible. You can keep track of our writing adventures and uh, whatever other goofy, interesting or less interesting things that we do. So yeah, don't be a stranger. Stick around. And by the time this show comes out, I promise I will have that Patreon up and running. So you can come check that out. Now, what our plan is with this show is this this is our modern day final episode. It felt weird throwing out that 10-year-old final episode just out of the blue. So I figured we would do this one where we do a kind of a actual final episode. And then the original final episode, I'm going to post like the next day, right after I post this one. So you can expect that one to also show up. Well, does it have to be the next day? Let's let this one be at the top of the screen for a while. Okay, it'll be close to the... It depends on when we get this show out. (laughs) Okay, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, it'll be sometime soon, anyways. Just after the this one airs, I'll put out the original final episode. And then I'll probably put out that episode of the Ankle Cast that I was talking about, where I did a, a story that I wrote. And I wrote th- that story back in 2020 when I was doing my 300,000 words. So it's a relatively new story. It's super new, actually, considering that I haven't written anything since 2020. So... <laughs> It's a new story that uh, even Rich Outfield's never heard, although he will by the time the episode's made, because I will force him to listen to it and then give his opinion on it. But yeah, uh, you can look forward to that. And then I'm just going to stop paying the bill and see what happens. <laughs> I don't know if it'll, it'll be archived for all eternity or if it'll just be dropped like a, a hot potato. We shall see. But you know, hopefully everybody listens and enjoys while they still can. And again, as I said before, they're not going away. They'll still be over on on YouTube. And it's possible that I may do something to uh, create a free 
feed of the dune steef and put that back out there if the feed that we have disappears. We'll have to see. That would be a lot of work. So I don't know. <laughs> Reposting 200 some odd episodes. Are we in 200s or 300s? How far did we ever get? Oh, surely we're only in the 200s. We only made it to about 225, but at least we're over 200. But anyways, putting up 225 episodes and change would be quite an undertaking. But, you know, it might be worth it. I might do it anyways. If it disappears, I I will probably feel compelled to do so. So we'll see how it goes. But yeah, don't be a stranger, everybody. We're still around. We still want to make stuff for you that you will enjoy and have fun. So come check that stuff out. Uh, both of us are going to be putting stuff out for for purchase on Amazon and Audible. And uh, we'll still have our podcasts so you can hear about what's going on and share those with your friends. Because, you know, that would be cool to have <laughs> even more listeners than before. I guess that sort of thing does happen, but uh, so I, I doubt it. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, too, uh, Big Anklevich, for uh, hanging out here and making me do this final episode and letting it be one of my stories, which I think is, uh, you know, I'm spoiled in that way. And so uh, that's it. Yeah, it was the obvious choice. And uh, thank you, Rich Outfield, for coming and doing this last episode with me and doing all the other episodes throughout all the years that we've done this. It has been a lot of fun. You know, I think we were good friends when it started, but we've only become better friends as the years have passed. It was worth it just for that. Thanks a lot for being there with me and for continuing to be there with me because remember, you agreed. (laughs) Well, I'm going to contact my lawyer between now and then, and we will find out if I am actually obligated to do that. People can tune into the ankle cast and find out what my lawyer said. (laughs) It's okay. I should win because I hired this Sony lawyer that... uh... Oh, best. (laughs) The worst kind of lawyer. (laughs) All right, thanks so much for being there with us, and uh, we'll see you next time on the Ankle Cast or Rish Outcast or both. I've been Big Anklevich. And I have been Rish Outfield. And I am an Outer Man. Indeed, you are. Yep. Uh, good night. See you later, folks. The Doonstorf is released under a Creative Commons attribution. Weird. The Doonstief is released under a Creative Commons Attribution No Deviations License. Derivation. Okay. Derivatives. derivatives? Okay. No deriv... Derivatives. Eh, I'll get it right. Non-commercial. No deri... deri- Why do I have der- derivatives? That's just weird. It's so stupid things on Wall Street. No derivatives license. So you can share the show with whomever you'd like. But you cannot change for it or alter. You cannot change for it? Charge. I guess I'm dumb. I can't read today. I'm tired. Did you tell them what the name of the story was? I did. Yeah, I called it Know When to Walk Away, Know When to Run. Oh, okay. Because I figured you would uh, elaborate as to why we were running that particular story. But I guess we can now. Yeah, we can do that after. (laughs) Um, uh... Uh, 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 and, and, um, that I had Murray in there, but he doesn't need to be mentioned because I, uh, forced him to. <laughs> Do you really not want to mention it because you forced him? You know, we didn't, and, uh, uh, for, uh, it's, and, um, uh, uh, they, uh, 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 if, and, uh, to, yeah, it's, uh, uh, you know, it, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, 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 you know, uh, 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 and, uh, you know, and, and, uh, you know, uh, 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 and, uh, uh, you know, uh, we, uh, 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 that, it, I don't know, I don't know, you know, it, it was, 
and uh, and so you know that it, it, um and uh, 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 but but uh, and um, and um, that so um uh uh uh, uh, uh yeah um uh, um um uh uh, uh 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 you know uh 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 uh, 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 uh you know just um uh and uh uh um uh, and uh 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 the uh it um uh uh who uh that uh, that would be neat yeah i, I don't want to i don't think we quite made it to 300 but i think we were in the upper 200s let me see real quick dang it can't type my password let's see damn it thanks for coming if you know what i mean hey now we have to put an explicit uh, thing on this episode. <laughs> oh, shoot. I wasn't recording. Oh, how typical. <laughs> I guess this is really goodbye, huh? Don't say goodbye. Say good journey. I pressed the button. You're listening to the Dune Steve Audio Fiction Magazine.